So it's another lovely night in Austin, Texas. And as you can hear from the uh, air conditioner whirring away behind me, summer is definitely on its way. So anyway, here we are with the fuselage halves joined together and the cockpit installed, the exhausts also installed into either side. Now comes the fun part, the wings. Now the wings on this kit are a five piece affair. You have the top and bottom on both sides and then you have the central underside piece that also houses the gear bay. Now the gear bay is resin, fine. Um, removing the pour stub on that proved to be a huge pain in the ass and I decided to spare you all the uh, monotony of me grinding away at it with a Dremel and a sanding drum. However, all these pieces have to come together in a way that a aligns and B hopefully doesn't show all that many gaps. So that'll be sort of our mission for the next little while. Now in service of that I've gone ahead and done the sanding and grinding work on the gear bay. You can see a couple holes in there, a couple oops moments. Um, this is a build review. I don't really care if there are a few holes in the resin. Obviously, you know, if you are building this thing for real, you may want to take a little bit more care. Um, I would recommend, especially up around here, there's this little step piece that houses, a, you know, the tank back here and some detail, and it's very easy to go through trying to cut that down enough so that it clears the cockpit. However, you know, this is good enough. It will hold the landing gear and allow the thing to sit as it should. So for review purposes, I'm calling it satisfactory. Now, as you can see, clearance in here is tight, but it certainly fits. Now with a tiny little bit of pressure, all of this stuff lines up quite nicely. Where the fun comes in is with the wings. As you can see, I mean, the, the detail on these is gorgeous. We'll talk about that again later. But as you can see, we've got some holes here, here, and here. Now these are for landing lights, as you can see, and the cannons, which are some nice resin bits. Now, those landing light frames are also resin bits, um, the kind that look to be particularly nasty to remove from the core block. Fragile pieces laying flat. Sweet. So anyway, assuming that those go in without too much trouble, I figure the cannons are very likely candidates based on the way they're shaped to be able to just slide in after the fact. We'll check that beforehand, however. But then these wing bits have to attach to the fuselage and to this under wing. So give you a sense of what we're looking at here. Come on. Ha! Bugs. That is the, uh, the wonder of Texas in the summertime. I have to get the bug lamp up and get running again. Anyway, I have a feeling this piece is going to have to be nice and glued down before we can really do too much here. But this wing piece, now you can see there needs to be a little bit of trimming to really clean that up. But it fits right here. Not too shabby. And if we flip it over, again, not too shabby. I'm not terribly worried about this. I think I might put a few alignment tabs in here. Uh, as you can see, there's you know, the potential for a step. So I might weld in a little bit of styrene just to you know make sure that everything goes according to plan back here. But it's honestly not that big of a worry because I've learned to flip ahead in the instructions. And right here, we have photo etch pieces that lay directly on top of where that seam is going to be, effectively hiding it. And these are some big ass strips of photo etch. So how big exactly? Not quite full width, but they come damn close. So there you have it. Those are going to be in place to cover up the seams and the worst of them. And we will just persevere. And we're just going to hold it here for a minute. 
Again, the plastic on this kit seems to be softer than your average bear. And because of that, it takes a bit longer to cure with the MEK. Come on. This is what I'm not a fan of with the soft plastic. It's the slip and slide that it tends to do. Come on, let's get aligned again. Right, just hold this for a little while. You can see we've got a little squeak out here that will take a little bit of trimming away. Not a big deal. Same on this side. Nothing too bad. Should be able to preserve most of that detail pretty easily. So it's time to play with the wings. As you can see, I've gone ahead and removed the landing light backing from the resin pour stub, and it fits in there nicely, except for this little leading edge problem where it won't really let them fully close all the way. So we gotta do something about that. Now, I've already got the other wing together and I had to hack and beat up the landing light backing a little bit. I don't care. It's going to be covered by glass. It's going to have something in front of it. Um, and again, this is just for a builder view. The fit on this thing is not particularly fantastic. It requires shaving in various areas, etc, etc. So let's see how we do that. So first things first is to inspect in here. Now it actually looks pretty clear in here. On the other side, there was some flash getting in the way of you know, sort of that, that little trap door mechanism. So that means that what is holding this puppy back is on this thing, which is not all the most fun in the world because it's really thin, fragile resin. But trusty sanding stick. Yay, we have fit. Okay, so now it's time to go ahead and lock the wings down. Start at the front because the front matters more for good alignment. Obviously on a full build, this section of the wing would need some filler to be happy. The trailing edge is an interesting one. It's pretty thick. Now this is something where I definitely wish that we'd been given separate ailerons. Fortunately, the Hurricane was known for having a thick wing, and what I'm doing here is just going in and getting a nice, good seal in those wings, or in the, in the back of the wing. I'm not as concerned for the flap area, because it would hinge down anyway. The aileron was one piece, so, you know, we got to at least try, right? So, this wing's coming along pretty nicely. Tape off. And then you come across here. A little bit more. And voila! Two wings done. Okay, so now we've got the fuselage done. We've got the underside piece here glued in. We've got wing one. 
wing two. These fit not too shabby. So this wing, again, look at that. Look at that level of detail. That is nice for a, for a limited run type kit. However, this is where things get interesting. So as you can see here, we've got a little bit of warpage going on on this very tail end, which has to, you know, fit down here. I am assuming pressure and solvent will fix that quite nicely. We've also got some flash that needs to be dealt with here and kind of along the seam overall. Um, it's not as bad back here, but it's still definitely present. So we want to, you know, knock that out as much as we can. Probably also down here too to assure that everything is lining up. I mean, I can see some right down in here that needs some major attention. This wing, you know, it doesn't have the warping going on on the very end here. And overall, it seems to have a lesser degree of flash. But let's do a little bit of cleanup. My favorite tool for this is just a number 11 blade. You can already see here how it's smoothing out. Presenting a more cohesive surface to weld to the main fuselage. And then this bastard. See how this lines up now. So up here we're going to have to obviously glue this thing down in stages. I think we obviously need to clear a little bit more from this corner. Not too much, just a tiny little bit. And on the bottom side, Again, keeping in mind that there's going to be photo edge that goes here. Not too shabby. So these pieces here should help with minor alignment just to keep the wings where they need to be give the glue something else to set to, all that good jazz. So now it's time to install the wings. Now I would show you what this looks like in Fly's instructions, but we go from this page to here, just plop the whole thing on. Yeah, I'm not gonna build them that way. Um, the center piece here is a bit too difficult of a fit to really, I think, pull that off very well. So we're gonna glue them in a different way. So as you can see, I've installed a few bracing pieces here. They're, they still have plenty of flex in them, but it's just to keep the wings from dipping under the level they need to be on. So. You can see they slide in quite nicely. I don't think there's any way to avoid a little bit of a gap in the wing root here. Start off with the front here and get the get the join going really nice. Again, this plastic is a bit soft, so we have to wait, which is frustrating. Tick-tock, tick-tock.
there's one wing. This top side set up for a bit before I tackle the bottom. Moving on to the port wing, so to get this to fit, I had to sand this lower wing piece down a bit before there was an atrocious gap. Now there's a more livable one. Again, this kit has a styrene that doesn't play super nice with MEK or Tamiya Extra Thin, which is frustrating because as you can see, the hold separates pretty quickly and means that you have to exert a significant amount of pressure and hold for a while until it finally decides, oh, I think I'm gonna cure now. Thin does a better job in here. This is some bullshit. Soft plastic is fucking killing me. Right, we're gonna pause. Well, the wings have been attached. So overall, Fit could have been better. Um, I've encountered much worse in my time, and with careful sanding, it's possible to reduce a good portion of the wing root gaps. I mean, not entirely ran into this sucker here. Now, part of the issue with these wing root gaps, and to a lesser extent, the gaps on the bottom, is that you've got a ton, excuse the fingerprint, that was an oops, You've got a ton of little tiny rivet detail in here, and it's raised. So careful sanding is definitely in order if you want to, you know, shim and fill and clean this up. Now, one thing that became a major headache during the wing install was the nature of this plastic, which is very slow to set when you're using liquid solvents on it. So MEK, Tamiya Extra Thin, whatever, it seems to take forever. And honestly, I haven't encountered anything this bad in that regard since Ravel's 109G6. Still, for the most part, you know, the wings are on. They've got their, you know, typical nice flat dihedral that the Hurricane is known for. They attach, you know, quite solidly once everything sets. And that is that.